you really start to question decisions. Well, that's me. I'm just going to crack the clutch because that's the clutch off the 330 and that to me looks fairly close I'm just wondering if that fitting is different there which is um, possible Yes, you see that clutch. Okay, so old clutch, new clutch. We've got a different shaft size. That looks like a three quarter tapered shaft, which is pants. And this one is a one inch shaft, and they put a, um, like a tapered sleeve on it as well. Ah, now that's frustrating means I've got to go and buy a brand new clutch for the 330 and that's exactly what I was trying to avoid So this one on the right hand side I was going to use because it, this has had a less harder life however there's an oil seal gone in there so I'm going to use this one that's had a slightly harder life but the gearbox is better and I'm just going to put the dry flanges
I don't honestly know what's wrong with it because everything seems to function. All I need to do is get the engine working. I just thought, oh, I'll put some petrol in and see what happens. And I've put some petrol in. <laughs> and the fuel line, which is just coming into view here, the red tap, there's a rather manky looking fuel line coming off that that disappears back of this metal box and then into the carburetor, which is way down in there. You can probably just about make out the pipe there. When you put petrol in, of course, it absolutely pours out everywhere. The rubber has gone and split and perforated. So my goal today is to simply change the fuel line. I've got some second hand stuff off my brother, off his race car. We're going to change the fuel line and see if we can get this thing running. So if I know the engine works, then I can test the gearbox and then we can test the clutch. What I'll do with this one is I may keep this one now. I was going to sell this one, run this with the flail and then sell my 330 with one of those two rotivators for it. And if I can get one good rotivator out of it, then that will go on the 330 and I should sell that try and get a bit of some of the money back for those that you're interested this is a 340 the 340 has got a three-speed one-way transmission and a four-speed another way transmission whereas the 330 has got three forward three reverse to be honest the fourth gear you never really use it it's too high a range it's like a transport gear but I don't think the transmission is any in any particular way more has any more strength to it. Turns out that pipe that I got from my brother is way too big. I think that was more like AN8. This I think is AN4 quite a small diameter pipe. This fits on just nice. I've just put a new throttle cable on short of uh, a new spark plug new air filter and an oil change to give it a nice bit of a service this is pretty much ready to go I think the clutch cable might want a bit of lube I'm happy with that machine What on earth is that? And that? What on earth are those? Something like plastic? What are they? That's a worry. Took that out. That came straight out. Suggests, even though this runs, there is a fundamental problem with this engine. That's a gear tooth, isn't it? That is. Gear tooth, in fact. Oh, blimey. Oh, no. That is even more. What on earth is that? I'd say whatever that is, that's terminal. Just rung Kilworth machinery, and he reckons it could be the governor gears. There's one on the end of the crankshaft, and there's one on the end of this back plate here. So I've got no choice but to take the engine off because inside the sump plug, I can see even more plastic. So I think the whole lot has disintegrated. If I can get the end cover off, then I'm gonna have a look inside it and see how much damage there is. And I've rang Colin in parts and he's going to find out if he can even get the spare parts for it. They're of a significant age that you may not even be able to get the parts brand new anyway. To get the engine off it's a simply case of releasing the throttle cable out of here. So there's a bolt there. Undo the, uh, the wire. And then there's six bolts. So we'll see hopefully here. So you've got six bolts all around here. Undo those. Thank you. 
I have no idea what to expect behind here. Springs and bits of all sorts coming out, I think. Uh, yeah, I think the governor gears um completely self-destructed and some sort of weight. So I've just took the busted gear off that, which was just a circlip. So I'm going to take that off and leave that off. As far as I understand governors, I'm not an expert on this. The way I understand the governor is if you open your throttle to full and engage your your drive under load you like this one under a flail load if it hits a load of thick grass the mower bogs right down and you just got a risk of it stalling the engine now i think what the governor does on this is it increases revs to counteract the fact that you've gone through something heavy that's made it almost bog down the store so it kind of picks up the revs increases torque copes with the bog down and then reduces that back down again and that's all down to the engine speed so if the engines quickly drops even though the throttle's open it somehow manually opens the throttle even more so we might be able to operate the whole engine without a governor if i can and i can get it to work for a few days i can soon strip it apart again put a governor back on again reconnect all the parts and know that it's back to normal but at the moment I'm thinking of operating it completely without a governor. One last look to make sure there's no more plastic bits left inside. Yeah, there's something there. Two metal pins in there like that. More bits of plastic. You see if some of that had gone inside the piston, it would have seized it. But um, I've got it all back on again. Fitted the clutch, took the spark plug out and it turns over ever so free. So, I'm no longer concerned about there be something in the engine. This is the throttle arm. If I disconnect the governor, it won't there's no direct throttle replacement, so I can't directly control that throttle. And I'm just wondering, like I say, the worst case scenario is the engine blows up. Truth now, it engine's back on, it's all back together, oil's in the crank, everything's tightened up, fuel's on. And so I'm going to give it a whirl, see how well it starts and revs, and then see what we can do with driving it about. Well, it works, and I found out what a governor does. It does stop it from over revving so what happens is if it has no load on it the engine just gets a little bit on the carried away side and then when it has a load on it you have to increase the throttle a little bit which is a little bit of a pain but as you can see it does make a cut the flail works that turns fine I zigzag down all the way down to the bottom end and uh, did okay with it you have to keep fiddling the throttle so we'll pull the throttle down on the throttle just when it gets bogged down you have to raise the throttle and vice versa i'm just going to pop up to kilworth and find out if they've got a second hand engine to see whether they've got a governor or not hanging around in their yard because they might just have and if they have i can buy it off them second hand unbelievably i managed to get a brand new end casing with a governor in it from kilworth Turns out they've got a brand new engine in bits and quite a few bits missing off it. And the end casing, all there complete. So I'm just going to swap the end casing over.
can safely say that performed pretty amazing. I'm well impressed. If it hadn't been for that governor fix yesterday, I honestly don't think I would have managed that. Something would have let go and I'm sure it would have been the engine.